Good afternoon, everybody. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defense Universe, getting you live from JW Marriott Aero City, New Delhi. We are here and counting down to Aviation India 2024, and we have with us. Alan Peeford, the chairman of the Aviation India Summit 2024. Welcome, Alan, to ADU's chat room. Wonderful to have you here. Thanks, thank you. It's great to be here. And, Alan, we are counting down. It's less than 24 hours. How does it feel to be doing it in India for the first time? It's tremendously exciting. I, I mean, we'd hoped to be here three or four years ago, of course, but got held back because of the COVID. Um, now is the time for us to be here. We're really excited about it. And what is happening? You know, it's the day of excitement. Everything is getting ready. I'm doing the making of the show. And what is actually there for us to look forward to tomorrow? Well, we're going to be addressing some of the big issues that are affecting India and indeed the whole of South Asia's aviation scene. There are a lot of different issues. And of course, with the government change just happening now, we're seeing different people coming into government. It will be interesting to see if there's a change of attitude towards some of the aviation issues that we're facing. Something that's happened with these summits, and we've held these in Africa, in the Middle East, is that we've talked about emerging markets. Of course, India isn't an emerging market, it's a re-emerging market. And what we need to understand is what is this renaissance all about? How is India going to change in order to meet the growth that the demand is expecting? And uh, when we talk of that, you know, when we say India is emerging, well, at the moment, we all feel India has emerged. And we have a very heavy market. We have a, you know, we have a, one of the best uh, connectivity, including the regional connectivity. So at the end of the day, how does Aviation India plan to add on to what is already existing for the Indian aerospace? What you need to see is, in fact, more approaches towards low cost. For example, Indigo doing fantastically well in developing its full regional point versus who? Some of the other airlines are coming in doing very small regional areas, maybe by state, maybe by smaller areas. And internationally, how is India competing? Air India, of course, is, is coming in a different way now. It's with the Tata side again. But how does it compare by price against maybe Emirates, for example, India's largest foreign carrier? There's a lot of issues on how do you draw that up. What about the airports on the regional airports? Is the growth sufficient to be able to get true regional low-cost carriers going? Why is it that we're not getting the finance in there to get some of these startups to move to the next stage? It's not happening. So there's a lot of issues that are still out there. Right, and uh, tomorrow when we start, we have an inaugural session where we brainstorm the complete aerospace and aviation sector in India. But we also, day after, have a very important session on the MRO status. Now, uh, have we, at the end of the day, uh, decided on this fact that uh, by the time we finish off with the event, MRO would have been brainstormed and MRO not only for the civil, but also for the military uh, purposes needs to be done. Have you invited the forces uh, to put up their point of view? Uh, not specifically. I mean, the MRO um, section is, is being run by the Aviation Week Network, um, who run MRO events uh, across the world. And uh, they've, they've put together some incredibly good people on that panel. Some of the issues that will affect the military, of course, is, as much as it affects the civil side, is going to be manpower, training, and how are the companies offering MRO services going to be able to maintain their staff levels against poaching from each other, or more likely poaching perhaps from some of the Gulf states. Many of the MRO businesses across the Middle East depend on Indian expertise and skills to be there. How is India going to entice back the people who know what they're doing? So that's going to be one of the issues. The other point is, where are the free zones? What happens when you've got an AOG and you've got to get parts? Where are they going to get taxed? What we need to see is a different approach to the way that parts management can happen. And these are the sort of discussions that are going to be happening on the MRO panels. Interestingly, the same kind of issues are coming up with training as well. We have some of the training academies um, on a panel, and we're going to be looking there is how are we going to do this? How are we going to meet the demand? So if MRO is going to have demand, if you're getting all the extra aircraft that you're getting into India, how are you going to maintain them? Where are the engines being maintained? 
Are they happening here? No, probably not. I don't think there's enough to be able to do that. So how are we going to build up for growth? And I think you're going to see that message coming across, whether you're talking to airline CEOs, to the MRO providers, to the business aviation community. I mean, I was talking to somebody in Dubai the other day about bringing a business jet into India. Can't do it unless they land at one of the great big airports, sit and take their place behind the other aircraft coming in. The country is not geared up yet for the huge amount of business aviation that brings benefits to the economy and to growth on a bigger scale than air transport does. And Alan also is there, uh, Aviation India is it trying to also get the leasing and finance industry into the you know, talk when we have these two days of brainstorming? Yeah, we've got a finance session that's, that's looking at that. Of course, what's happening in Gift City is interesting. But as you know, there's been some issues about recovery when airlines have gone down for um, lessors to recover their assets, which has been a bit of an embarrassment, I suspect, for India's finance people. It, it's a challenge. We've got a number of people from aviation finance attending the event. And a lot of what goes on on the stage is merely the way to get people talking when they attend the networking events. Now, we know we're going to have more than 600 people here now. Um, registration is, is really going quite quickly and they're struggling to keep up with the demand. What goes on in the networking events is actually the real benefit of the show. Yes, of course, the showcase is what goes on on stage, but it's what goes on in the exhibition hall and at the coffee breaks and the receptions and so on afterwards, because that is where the business is done. And I think we're going to see, at Aviation Index, the first one, I think we're going to see far more than we expected. Already, we've got several suggestions for people who want to host us in a year's time. So I think we're going to see Aviation India is here to stay. This is not just a one-off. This is the start of something big. Thank you so much, Alan. This is the first uh, day prior the first day. And uh, I think by the time we end with the event and I do a wrap-up interview with you, it'd be wonderful to know that we really hit on to a lot of things we decided that we would. And uh, let's hope all the best for the event. And tomorrow when we begin, I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful day to be a brainstorm. Two days of actual Aviation India being recorded, being discussed, being brainstormed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.